where last summer if he fell, I mean, it was like, I mean, he would just fall and hit his face. Yeah. You know, and he just, it, his brain was not telling him that his hands, that's what it seemed like to me. And part of that too, you know, now you've got very straightforward motor weaknesses because you learn, like I told you, exclusively you kind of develop these seven sensory systems. One of which is vision, one of which is vestibular. Vestibular has a lot to do with your equilibrium. Yeah, what are the seven then? So the seven of the five senses you've learned in yeah. school, basically, which is going to include touch, which we call tactile. Uh -huh. And then the other two we call the spe well, we call the special senses, OTs, <coughs> are another one called proprioceptive input and vestibular input. Yes, I've never heard of those. So see, that's why we're saying when we said you have the right equipment and you don't have the right knowledge, you have to understand these because one of these probably has I could gather at least 70% to do with all of what's happening with your son. <laughs> so we need you to know this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, we're going to give you a quick little one too, and then I want to navigate him and very lovingly trap him in the other room after he's done coloring. <laughs> well, no, and like, well, my son Russell would not pick up a crayon until it was four, so I'm like, so he's colored on your sheet. Like, he really likes to do that. Oh. <gasps> You and you can go ahead and interact with him all you want. Oh, because I come over there and help him. I'm gonna. You want a red? I want to leave. I go with color with uh, green. Let's see. I'm gonna make up a duck. A duck. A duck. What's the duck saying? <laughs> well, you want my green? Say please. Please. Okay. Do you see any kind of hand preference coming out for eating for anything? That's um, you maybe his right, but I just haven't. I, I, maybe is right, but I really haven't well, truthfully paid much attention. No, it's fine. It's early. But I just like to see if there's a preference coming out. Sometimes yeah. they don't know to go to the better one. You want the blue? So we guide them there. Mm -hmm. They've shown some blue. Okay. Can I do red? Red, where are you? Yeah, well, so far with all of his picking up toys and things, I'm all right. excited doing everything yeah. with both hands pretty equally. Okay. Um, which is fine. I mean, some children will start, you know, coming out with a preference as early as, you know, spoon feeding occurs. You know what I mean? So it would be as early right. as when finger feeding and spoon feeding occurs, you know, 18 months. Um, other children don't, you know, really truly pick a dominance until a little bit later on. Where's but your feet? By the time we get to some your starter feet? crayon skills, like three years old, and you're closer to three than you are to two, right. um, you do tend to start to pick one. Right. Um, and I will, yeah, I don't think he does have a preference. Mm. So is it better for me to give him a no, preference? At or this not? point, okay. no. It's better for you like to I, hand him a spoon. Do if I, I have a kid who, yeah, exactly. If I have a kid who doesn't know what's what, but I see a, a dominant side clearly emerging, both, you know, leg, arm, you know, and there's something clearly, then I'll perhaps guide them to that side if they're at that age you know what i mean where they really should be starting to pick but at his age because again i'm kind of correcting him it's not like he's a preemie but like i'm kind of like just kind of aging him the way i see him and then basically approaching how to handle things as such so i would have everything right at the middle like this um so spoons crayons toys everything really neglect to use your dominance as giving them to that side and put everything straight in the middle are you making a train out of my beads? Chicka 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 choo choo. The other thing, as far as his not frustration, I know you're talking about him being a pickle versus something that's arousal based. Right. Um, it is the way that he kind of, and I'm laughing, not laughing at him, yeah. I'm just laughing at this situation. His kind of toss and disregard attitude of just like, Duh! you know what I mean, is a little young. You know what I mean? Is like, what? he's a little young, social, emotionally young. We would yes, expect that from right. a younger child to be like, you know, to toss things and start you know, right, kicking right, things. Right. A little bit younger. Um, you know, right. like I said, you're closer to three than you are to two. Right. So, um, and I've noticed that more. Well, you know, because the little girlies with is younger, and next year in November he'll go in the special needs too. class, and um, and that's one thing that. Like, even this weekend at the beach, there's a little girl that's a month older than him. So pretty much, you know, the same, I told you. And it's like watching her navigate or watching kids at soccer games when he can't come because he's a rep. You know, they're able to run around and play. And you kind of forget of what you're supposed to be like, even if you have three other children. Yeah. For this weekend, I was like, wow. Like, do you need another cover? There you go. 
and he would need like need the stroller to be able to get in the stroller to settle down with his blankie. Yeah. So then I'm like, well, is it good to, should I do that? Is that, incur you know, it's kind of hard to know. Do you haul this blankie around to help him or is that in the long run hurt, you know, like that's the kind of stuff. I think the blankie is fine. And even if I had a child who had established sensory issues that were contributing to his arousal difficulties, I would still be putting elements of security and comfort in to keep them out of those totally disorganized states. Right. Um, there's no good to come at being like Correct. so over, yeah, it's, it's such a meltdown mess. There's no benefit to working through that when you have sensory problems. Yes, because it issues. doesn't help. It doesn't help. And that's why I'm also against, you know, sleep methodologies that are cried out when you have a child who has established sensory modulation He's a great, issues. No, he, goes, he goes right to bed. But he for the same issue, hours, they're right. not learning anything from that. Right, they're just right, putting them right. in a larger state. And that's the harder thing for typically developing what children. Happens? If they fuss and have a tantrum, you walk around them and ignore them, you know? Yeah. Well, the one thing that's interesting for a child this age, we are dominated by our sensory processing in a certain sense that younger children are typically on the go, on the move, uh, need a lot of input, need a lot of exercise, for lack of a better word, lots of physical activity. It's almost, and not in a bad way, because we all have our strengths and our gifts, that's how we were built, um, but it's less likely to see a child of this age to be this content with uh, this kind of stuff. Right, when I answered that question, I was like, he will sit. Right, which is and actually I not so good. typical. Right. Well, and not, not good. No, like said, gifts and your strengths yeah. and weaknesses, but not typical. Because he'd be too, like his little friends are too busy. Well, Not the and, girls as much. And as for boys. him, if he indeed has difficulty using his body, controlling his body, doing larger motion, you know, gross motor and fine motor coordination tasks, he will, children don't want to always have things be difficult and always have things be challenging, so they will pick the road less traveled. Right. I would rather sit and do puzzles than do things that are exercise and hard and a little challenging for me or, or, or frustrating for me because I can't make my body do what I want to do. So we don't need to work on puzzles. No. It's not that we need to work on <laughs> no. his body. He's probably very good, uh, you know what I mean, comparatively speaking. Right. right. Um, and some of that is just, like I said, from his choice, his choice to have more exposure What's to this? be indulged in those. It's a seating cushion to provide a little bit more vestibular input to help focus and hone attention as well as to re-alert your posture when it's getting kind of droopy uh -huh. or a little asymmetrical. Uh -huh. Um, and so we use it for several different reasons. Some kids we use them, the kids who can't sit still, other kids we use them just to literally assist their posture more ergonomically. Right. Um, other kids who have lower muscle tone and need a little bit more waking up, uh, we do just that. But this would be, honestly, you know, you probably also remember from your other children, though, that this would be dreamy for my two-year-old to just sit and play with puzzles and go there and play with their cars all afternoon. Well, yeah, he doesn't do that. He so, goes from one activity. Well, he's he definitely is a little Tasmanian devil with, you know what I mean? Here I am, done. Here I am, done. Right, Here I am, right, done. Like, right. I wonder where he's been. Oh, there he is. Right, um, right. So he definitely is kind of a destroyer. But part of that is appropriate. But with what's less typical to me and, and not concerning to me, but definitely puts flags up to me, is that most kids this age, I can't get out of that room. Well, I was just thinking, he doesn't want to be in that room. No. Right. Which um, that would be his little friend he's Scott. Kind of going he would like to be little, dying to be in there. Yeah, he's going to this like safe space where you know I, I get what the challenge load is here. I know what the expectations are. I pretty much deem the expectations it's pretty low load, you know? Even a very, very young child can roll cars in front of themselves and this and that thing or place things. And he's kind of going to those. So the problem with that is it's self-limiting. It's not going to give him, um, it's not going to help him expand out into play skills. It's not going to let him run with the pack. Um, any better in the pack, and like you said, it's worse, like I was saying before, merciless, disrespectful, and they will leave you in a hot second if you yeah. can't keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is very kind of, you know, high challenge for him right now. So he's kind of picking the lower road of, right. you know, I'll just stay where I'm comfortable, where I'm content, in my zone, and, and why Well, it just made me think, like, how late I never thought about autism or something, so you don't see it from that angle. This is what I see so far. Um, and it's also hard because he's, he's got visual impairments, he's got motor impairments. Um, not a doctor. I don't diagnose. You know, it's not what TV. I do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's not what I do. But what I am concerned about from a social emotional perspective is 
the fact that like he engages with you, he knows you, but I don't see that like thirsty engagement. You know, typically even with new people, even if you don't like them or you don't want to play with them, you're still very interested in them. Like, what are you gonna do? You know, or what? Right. You, like, you're suspicious of them. You're like, you know, scrutinizing of them, and. I kind of feel like he doesn't really care that I'm here, nor has he really taken much attention on him. He does, which is not typical. Right. Typical kids at this age are very curious and thirsty, and very skeptical. Right. And very untrusting. Right. <laughs> so they typically, at least, even if they don't want to play with you, they know exactly no, who you are. Right. They know like what you're up to, and he's not doing that. So that concerns me a tiny bit. Right. Um, from an engagement, social, emotional point of view. Right. Um, so, you know, without tossing out big words, do we have a lot of that in autism? Sure. Do we have a lot of it in developmental delays? Absolutely. Do we have that in syndrome kinds of things and genetic things? Absolutely. So, but is it too early to say yes? Um, low muscle tone is definitely something that he has. I'm sure Lori has mentioned this too. Hopefully, the therapist at home have also mentioned that to you. What? Yes. Low muscle tone? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So, what was yeah. okay there? Yeah. Um, so, we definitely have that. That can be all by itself with no other diagnoses. That can be part of many of the diagnoses. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he has like seven codes from the adult and pediatrician, yeah. but to me, none of them are like real diagnosis, like low muscle tone. Like, no primary diagnosis. And I just saw that little get up from the floor. We had the genetic about. testing mm -hmm. um, at Miami Children's, but we haven't done that sequencing Thank you. thing. And the problem with genetic testing is unless you're looking, unless you get, how do I explain this? There's so many genomes. So unless you have the study, the essay that just happens to look at the right collection of the right genes, right. it's very possible that those could come in up to conclusive, but it doesn't mean you don't have a genetic disorder. And she said he could have one and there might not be a name for it. Exactly. Or, and that's the other thing. That's right. the, I love that one. And I have many children with those, actually. Right. Right. With the ones that just don't have a name until they make one for yeah, the let's name. Put these down. So let's, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put these away just for let's one hour. I'm going to have you navigate him back in that room where he's not comfortable. Here we go, because that's where I'm going to That's what I need to That's what I need to fix. He's climbing up the steps. We're going to close in there. We're going to close in there. What's under here? Oh my goodness, I'm going to lay down. Oh, this is so cozy. <laughs> and I like that he engages with you, but you work very hard to engage him. I would, well, we all see, do. My family I would love to see more spontaneous, like with you, who's comfortable, familiar, trustworthy, right. etc. I would love to see more, like, even like little mischievousness, a little trickery, a little like. And he will do that. Like, if we're out yeah. somewhere and I say, Amos, come back here, he'll start laughing and run the other way. So we do have some of it. So I guess I would just like to see it more. more. And especially with my husband, you know, he really goes after my husband's attention, I guess, because he doesn't see him as much. Mm -hmm. She's gonna get your stinky toes. Let me have your stinky toes. He's also very content, just like with the discard, you know, when you're throwing things. He's very content with some very primary patterns of play. Dump and option permanence, drop and discover, yeah. those kind of things. Oh my goodness, I touched your leg! Versus your other children instead of wanting just to drop them all, make everything disappear much like, you know, younger children uh -huh. do, they might organize them, they might put them in a pile, they might stack them, right. they might move them from one to another. Um, and you know, you need to... And he does that with like cars and trucks or yeah. trains. They'll take them upstairs or downstairs. That's good. So like, you know, something like this would usually be our primary, whereas his primary is he's still kind of thinking there's some reward in game and like, where'd it go? Really? Where'd it go? Oh, see, yeah. I thought he was just doing it just to... Because he didn't feel like it. No, and you can do the same things when they throw things. Like, when kids first start throwing things, they're Yeah, no, I knew that. Same kind of idea. So, yeah, because half the time he actually wasn't looking. But he's throwing them to hear them drop and, like, it wasn't even like, No, no, he doesn't look like he's discovering anything. Right. And so that's kind of the fact that that pattern's still there. It's just kind of immature, you know what I mean? We should have moved on, kind of, we really shouldn't find so much more out of that. Right. And he's still taking the time. Um, you know, play time to do that. To do it. Versus starting with something like this and then expanding it even further. Mine. So like that I love. You know, that little, <laughs> you know, give it back. Don't you get up here. Nope. 